Hey there, it's Jennifer. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to show you how to create some fun and fast birthday cards. And I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way, al along with a new product that I found that I really like. So here are the birthday cards. They're very quick and easy. But I'm going to show you how to do the little loops with the string, also add some shimmer to those balloons. Very quick and easy. And you could probably use some of the things you already have on hand. In this, I also wanted to show you a die set that I recently found that I love, and a lot of people were asking me about this on Facebook, so I thought I'd show you here. This is the Avriel Custom Panels. Now, it looks kind of odd here, all these different pieces, but there are so many things you can do with this die set. Now, for this card in this video, I'm going to use the arch circle there, or that little arch, but the other pieces, I'm going to show you what you can do with them at the end of this video. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you some fun things in another card that you can use with these other die pieces. But let's go ahead and use this little arch here to create these balloon cards. If you don't have the arch, you could always trace a circle to do these. And I decided to go with some colorful balloons, so I picked five pieces of cardstock. I actually used some Avriel cardstock because I want to use the matching ink on them later on, but you could use any cardstock. To speed up the process, I'm going to just take a piece of tape, a temporary tape, and hold two pieces together. This will keep them still so I can run it through the die cut machine. Here's that arch die that I think is just fantastic. You can do little piece to go on the bottom of a card where you can stamp your greeting, but here I decided to use it as a balloon. So I'm just going to tape it in place, and I'm going to take the other three pieces, because this will cut through three layers even, and tape those together temporarily so that I'll be ready to put those through the die cut machine too. So I'm just going to grab my Big Shot. Any, um, any die cut machine will work for this. And I'll just put it between the two cutting plates and it'll cut right through. So this arch could also be used for like a hilltop. You could do all kinds of things with it. I, I don't know. There's something about this die set that I just think is very universal. So now I have two of my balloons cut. You can see how quick this is. If you do not have this arch die, you could just trace uh, a plate or any kind of circle. You just need part of a circle to be part of the balloon on the card. Now I decided I wanted to add some fun to this, so I'm going to add some sparkle. So I'm going to take all of my pieces of balloon and temporarily adhere them to a piece of scrap paper. And I'm also going to take a little scrap of each of the colors from which I'm going to cut the little knot on the balloon and glue those temporarily to a piece of scrap paper. Now what I'm going to do is spray this with a glitter spray. I found one that I really like. It doesn't come off. It's this glitter dust. And I just think this is fantastic. What I do is I go outside and I can spray it as much as I want. And I put a couple coats on. You could get more if you wanted to. And look at that soft shimmer you get to it. It's kind of like Wink of Stella, but you don't have to waste all your Wink of Stella covering that whole piece. So it's a quick way to add some shimmer to that paper. And I, I don't know, it just adds a lot to a simple card like this. Now it's time to cut the little knots for the bottom of the balloon. And to save time, I'm going to cut two at once. So I'm just going to go and kind of create a cut like a messy triangle with a curvy bottom just to look like the bottom of the balloon that's along the knot. Now I'm not going to worry about actual the knot itself because we're going to tie some string about this, but we just needed the bottom of the balloon. And by cutting two at once, I saved quite a bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in each of the colors. Now I'm going to put these balloons on the top of a top folding card using some foam tape. Uh, some of the balloons I put in the top left corner, some of them I flipped over and put in the top right corner just to kind of change things up. Now I could see this card design being used with any kind of paper. You can use up scraps of pattern paper, you can use textured paper, a stamped paper, anything you have. Uh, I just decided to go with the quick cardstock with the spray of glitter. I went ahead and added the balloons onto all the cards and then it's time to add the knot on the bottom of the balloons and the string. Now I decided to use some black and white baker's twine because I have a lot of it on hand. I actually never use baker's twine on cards for some reason. I don't, for some reason it just never works on the cards that I create but I think it works perfect here because this card is very simple. So I'm going to cut a little triangle of foam tape to put behind the little knot on the balloon. I'm going to put that on the back side of it and then I will tie my string around it. So I'm going to put this down. I'm going to lay a piece of the string down at the bottom of the balloon so that it's kind of trapped behind the little triangle that we're putting down. And then I will tie it on a knot around that top. So I'm sticking that triangle kind of under the balloon. Very easy to do. And then I can tie this in a knot around it. And there's some tape there holding that string in place. But just to be sure, I am going to go back and squirt a little bit of adhesive underneath that knot. My favorite adhesive to use with strings or ribbons or fabrics, anything like that, is the multi matte medium from Ranger. I'm just going to take a uh, little dot and put it right underneath there. You don't need much, just a little bit, and it dries quickly on its own. 
So now for the baker's twine here, I'm going to kind of loop it around. I'm going to put a link to another way you can do this kind of loop. I'll put a link right here to another video where you cover the string with this uh, adhesive and kind of form it into the loops. But what I decided to do for these cards was to create a loop and then just kind of move the loop out of the way and then put little dots of the adhesive and then lay the string into it. Now it will feel like it's not going to hold, but I promise if you just put the little dots under there, position the string right on top of the dots, and then go put a book on it and leave it for a few minutes, it will stay and you, your string will stay uh, good enough to put through the mail. So this is a very quick and easy thing to do, and I really think the loop of the string is much more fun than just letting it hang there. And I also leave a little bit of the baker's twine kind of hanging off the card, and it'll just kind of fold up when you put it in the envelope. So I did that with all of the cards, and then it was time to add a stamped greeting. I love this one from Averiel. I used this stamp set the other day. I think anything kind of fun and big works for this card. I'm using the Averiel pigment inks that match the card stocks that I used. I really like these pigment inks because when you ink up the stamp, you can see that you have good coverage on the stamp, so you can make sure you get a nice solid image. And sometimes when you get an ink and a card stock that are supposed to match, they don't really match. I find these match very well, and I like that I can kind of count on them going together. So I went ahead and stamped all of the cards with the matching ink and I quickly have a set of five cards and these cards took me after I got all my supplies out and ready it took me about 25 minutes to make these and that's not bad that's about five minutes a card. Now if you just made one at a time of course they would take longer but since I made a bunch at once now I'm set. You could give this set as a gift if you wanted to. I'm just going to keep these on hand for when I need a birthday card. So now that I showed you one thing that you could do with that Avriel custom panel die set, you could do the arches on those balloons, I wanted to show you what you can do with some of the other pieces because a lot of people were asking about it, and I just think this is a great die set. So in the, in the set are these little hexagons and circles and a label. That's pretty obvious. You can just make little accents to put all over your cards. But the other pieces are the ones that I think are really awesome. This one cuts a wave. Now that seems kind of silly, but think of the number of times you wanted to cut waves or hills or valleys or whatever for a card. And you kind of do them by hand and they don't look right. This does it for you. And you can flip it and use it either way. You can use it as at an angle. You could do whatever you want with it and I really think that's a great tool to have and I'll be reaching for this often. Now another die in the set that I think is fantastic is this angled edge here. Angled edges on cards are very popular right now, just something fun and different. You could cut these on your own, but this one's got a really good angle and you can put it on a pattern paper or a stamped piece and have it exactly where you want it. You don't have to try to figure it out with a trimmer. So I went ahead and cut a piece here and there's many ways you could use these pieces. You can just put the one piece on like this, and have some stamping on it and you have that fun angled edge. Or you can take both pieces and separate them a little bit and have some stamping peek out from behind it. A lot of things you can do with it, and it just makes the whole process easier. Now this next die I think is so brilliant, and I wish I would have seen this earlier, and I'm so glad we have it now. It seems silly, but it's a, a die that cuts a four and a quarter by five and a half piece, which is the size of a card. Now that may seem like, why can't, you know, why can't I just cut that with my trimmer? Well, if you have a pattern paper like this one with a pattern, it's sometimes hard to figure out with your trimmer to make sure you center a pattern just right. It really is important on the eye to kind of have a pattern centered. With this, you can see exactly, tape it down, and then run it through your die cutting machine. Or you can, you know, make sure you get the right part of a stamp greeting, whatever you need. So I think that will be a good one to have also. Now the last one in there is this uh, odd shape up there on the left, and it comes with this spacer that you see here. It looks like a plus sign. The way this works is you can put it down in the center of your card, and then you can go and position this little piece up against that spacer, and just take the spacer away, and tape down your piece, and run it through your die cut machine. And then once you've done that, you can come back, put the spacer in, and position it again. You could keep the spacer in when you run it through the die cut machine. There's lots of ways to do it, but I found this was the quick and easiest. And you can get this really cool pattern where you could put some stamping behind it. I actually did a quick card using this piece here. I did some stamping behind it and put a greeting on the front. If you go over to my blog, I'll have information on what I used to create this card. But I just wanted to show you what you could do with those cool pieces. Now, Avriel, I don't work for Avriel. I did, they didn't ask me to do this video. I just saw this die set and I thought it was something that would be really useful and a lot of people were asking questions about it. So 
I wanted to include at the end of this video. So there you have some quick and easy birthday cards and a look at a cool new product. If you're inter interested in any of these products, they're linked below in my YouTube description. They're all there. Or you can head over to my blog where I'll be giving away some of these Avriel inks that I used earlier, and I'll have much more information. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to see you again next time.